Today, I'm gonna to be trying to get this beautiful VFD display up and running on an Arduino for this big secret project that I'm working on. This came out of a much larger piece of vintage equipment and I'm actually replacing the main board in that with an Arduino so that I can get it to do what I want. Uh, it's involved a ton of reverse engineering work, but we're almost done, and uh, this is one of the last steps is to get this working. I'm actually really excited about this. This, this thing is just gorgeous. They were super popular in the late 1980s. Uh, they made over 100 million a year at the, at the peak of production, and they were in everything from microwaves to VCRs to calculators. This is a particularly nice one from ISC Electronics Corporation in Japan, which is now Noritake. Um, I originally thought that you bought just the glass part and that this was a custom board and I was gonna have to figure out, you know, what the heck this custom board was. But it turns out this thing is sold, uh, or was sold, as one entire module from Noritake slash ISE. And, uh, and I actually was able to find the data sheet for it. So it's, it's 20 characters wide, two lines tall, and it can display more than just ASCII. It can display Japanese characters and a whole bunch of extended, extended character sets. It's, it's really gorgeous. The, the glass construction is amazing. And then, uh, and then the circuit board is just, just pretty stunning. It's, you know, it's just like, super crisp yellow silk screen and the traces are just really nice. I, I don't know, it's just really well made. I, I searched for this particular model online and uh, it turns out these are pretty hard to get. I only found one site that was selling them and they're selling them for over $600. I, I think it's because this particular model was only sold to uh, OEMs, uh, equipment manufacturers and not sold retail. Um, so there just aren't that many of this particular model, but other models are in the like 50 to 100 buck range. I don't think it was that expensive um, originally. Regardless, I really don't want to drop this or, or break it in any way electrically. But let's try and, and get it up and running. Uh, I really want to be able to put my own characters on here. Now, the, the first step in that is to find a data sheet. And I did some Googling. I was able to find a data sheet, but it's just a single page. So um, let's look at this together. So it's got a five-fold supply. It says it displays ASCII, katakana, and extended character fonts, two lines by 20 characters tall. It says that it can do either high-speed parallel or serial. So the Arduino that I have, I have an Arduino Due that I wanna run this on. And this is actually a 3.3 volt Arduino, but it does have a five volt power supply on it. So what I wanna do is see this, the, the logic pins on this will spit out a maximum of 3.3 volts. And the logic high on this is only two. So, so as long as it's more than two volts, this will see it as a logical high, um, which will allow us to drive it with this 3.3 volt. Uh, Arduino. The last thing that's really important right now is the pinout. So this thing has this connector here and it doesn't, it's not really labeled what these pins are, but the data sheet has it. So it has, so one through eight are D0 through D7, which are presumably the, the parallel port or the parallel connection data pins. And then it has WR and CS, which I don't really know what those are. And then it has S in slash test, which I think is serial in. And then 12 is busy, which maybe it flips when it says, hey, I'm busy, don't send me anything more. And then two ground pins and two five volt power supply pins. So I think the next step is to take that set of pins and wire up a board that allows me to connect this from this connector here to pins on the Arduino. And, uh, and then we can write some software. There we go. There is the board. Uh, I, I added a, a separate set of female hitters here so I can plug other stuff into the Arduino. This, this Arduino has two sets of pins sort of hanging off the back end, similar to the Mega. And then I added one bodge wire here because I realized if I want to use the serial, uh, the, the serial capabilities of this screen, 
uh, if I end up needing that, then I gotta plug it into one of the serial connections which sit off to the side here. So, um, so that's what's going on there. It looks a little messy, but uh, but you know, it's more or less just connecting every pin straight through. So taking every pin on here that is not power or ground and connecting those to a data pin and then power and ground obviously. And then I actually added another connector here. Um, that is for the other set of displays on this, which are just seven segment displays um, running on a uh, Max 7219, which is a, a really um, common uh, seven segment driver chip. So uh, I gotta get that up and running as well. But I thought that was a little less interesting than, than this very cool piece of, of history here. So all that's left now is to, to write some software. I'm actually gonna take uh, all of this back to the Airbnb that I'm staying at, um, since I don't need the soldering iron or any of the other equipment in the shop, and, uh, and work on this tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> I wanted to take a moment and have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart chat with you. As I mentioned in my last video, I, I've been working really hard on this big secret project uh, for like the past couple months since like July. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know it's been a huge roller coaster. We're super close to finishing it, but it's taking way longer than I ever expected. And I've broken a lot of really expensive parts. Honestly, I would have given up if I didn't have an awesome sponsor that's made it possible to buy all of the replacement parts that I need. And that sponsor is Audible. I, I couldn't keep going if it wasn't for them. Unless you've been living in a cave for the past 10 years, you've already heard of Audible. But have you actually tried them out? I grew up listening to audiobooks, and Audible's been my go-to source for the past few years. They have the largest selection on the planet. So I hope you'll join me in thanking them for sponsoring this channel and the crazy things I do by trying Audible out. You can get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible Originals, when you try Audible out for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash strangeparts, or by texting strangeparts to 500-500. One of the questions you might have, though, is what audiobook should you listen to? And I've just recently started listening to Permanent Record by Edward Snowden. Uh, it's the book that he's getting sued by the U.S. Justice Department for uh, writing and publishing. Um, and regardless of what you think of him and what he's done, it's a fascinating listen. You can download it and heaps of other audiobooks, including Audible Originals, which are exclusive stories told by actors, journalists, and more. To get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible Originals when you try Audible for 30 days, visit audible.com slash strangeparts or text strangeparts to 500-500. Now, let's get that screen working. I had to get a haircut. I, I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Hence. Hence the change. Let's write some software and get this thing working. Now I don't have a lot to go on other than just that one page in the data sheet, but I think it's enough. I've never done any parallel port work before. I, we probably get this up and running with serial, but I thought, you know, let's, why, why do the easy thing? Let's try the more challenging one. You never know what you'll learn. The first step is just to make sure that the Arduino is working. Uh, I've learned that the hard way. Um, the way I like to do that is just by um, loading up the the blink sketch that, that blinks the built-in LED. So right now, that LED is solid. It's the orange LED. And it blinks, no problem. We know that everything's working between the computer and the Arduino. Good to go. Now the question is, how do we get the parallel port working? So let's see. Let's load up a new sketch here. I need to remember what pins I've got all connected to. So one. Haha. <laughs> I wired this upside down and backwards. <laughs> the green wire here is actually pin one, but I've wired it to the second pin in, and then I wired pin two to the first pin. Ugh. Well, that's not really worth fixing, but it's gonna drive me crazy. So pin 50 is one, and 52 is two. This is boring. Cool. So this just sits on top. It sits in these pins. There. So on the data sheet, we've got WR and CS. And I, I did some Googling and CS is chip select. And WR I think is like write ready. So the way the letters are encoded uh, in this and in most systems is via ASCII. This looks like an ASCII table here. Uh, and, and basically this is telling us it's, it's a little bit tricky, but it's telling us in hex, which is, you know, base 16 numbers, the values of each of these characters and what they look like. And and the the left-hand side, the, the rows are the first, are the least significant digit, and the and the columns are the are the most significant digit. 
So, you know, like 41 is capital A, which is equivalent in ASCII. So I think this is ASCII or pretty close to ASCII. So we need to send that number, like 41, hex 41. Uh, we need to set that in binary on the eight pins. And then we need to drop WR and CS, which are normally high, voltage high. We're gonna drop those low and it should read it. Let's write a function that is send character. Uh, now, we need a character to send, char. Let's create a pin mapping here. So pins are from least significant, I think. Pin eight is 40. So we now have an array that we can look up the pins in the in the data that we're sending. We can look up by pin. So now this is where it's gonna get kind of technical. We are going to write for loop. Uh, and we're gonna step across the bits in the character that we're gonna send. So the bit that I want to send, so it's going to be C anded with one. We're only looking at the least significant digit, which is a value one. Now we need to, before we do that though, we need to shift it by the digit that we're on. So we're always shifting it over and chopping the last one off. So we're going to shift that by I. If this doesn't make any sense to you, I'm sorry. Just know that, that we're setting each of the pins to be a binary number. We're gonna set the CS and WR pins to be low. And, and then we're gonna have to wait a little while and I don't know how long that needs to be. Let's be really generous and give it 100 milliseconds. Now, lastly, let's have it spit out some A's. So we'll have it spit out send character A, capital A, and then we'll have it delay for about 500 milliseconds. Okay, here we go. You ready? Nothing. Well, that doesn't really show anything. So, <laughs> I was hoping it was just gonna work. I guess let's do some debugging and make sure we're sending the right stuff. It's not doing anything. <laughs> if you're curious, this is what being a professional software engineer is like. <laughs> Particularly one that works on hardware, which I've never really done much of professionally other than YouTube. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of sitting around and going, huh, I wonder why it's not doing anything at all. I have no idea if this is gonna do any good, but nothing. Hop, this was gonna be simple. Oh, all my numbers are wrong. That's what's going on. All of my pins are wrong. I was reading the other side, okay. The Arduino has two sets of pins on the end here, and I was reading this side, but they're actually plugged into this side. Oops, this should work. Yes, and it does. Check this out. The Y with the umlaut on it is actually the last character. I, I did that for debugging. Uh, that's zero X F F. We're gonna remove that. And uh, now we should be able to uh, print a whole bunch of A's out here. There we go. What to do now? I can only send a single character at a time, and I, I would like to be able to write a, a full string to it. So let's write ourselves a print statement. Instead of saying send character now, we're gonna say print. Hello world. It's a traditional thing to print when you first get something working. Let's give that a shot. Hey! <laughs> that worked really well, better than I thought. Uh, let's add a new line just so it doesn't look ridiculous like it does now, but uh, I think we're pretty good. Oh, that's looking better. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. I, think, I mean, I think we're pretty much there. Uh, what else should we print? We'll make a little animation, how about that? Um, I found these little, these little characters, the little, little like antsy drawing characters, they're little boxes and they're varying widths. And so I thought maybe we could do a cool animation with those. Getting that coded up here. Um, mm, that's not quite what I had in mind, but it's cool. Let's uh, 
Add a little delay. All right, okay, so this is what I've been trying to do. That's the idea. I wanna speed it up. I'm gonna remove my delays. Ooh, that's pretty trippy. I think it could, could use with being slowed down a little bit. I mean, the top line looks cool. It's kind of what I was going for. I mean, I think we got it working. Uh, that, that actually was not too bad in the end. Um, there you go. VFD display. So this goes in, as I alluded to, a much larger project that I thought was gonna be over a long time ago, <laughs> but it's almost there. Uh, we have been breaking tons of equipment. There's a lot of story involved, but anyway, it, it's gonna be a pretty awesome video coming up. Hopefully that video will be out in the next couple weeks here. I'll see you again soon.